Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is going to be my review of How to Train Your Dragon 2. I think it's only a coincidence that Kit Harington is in both this movie and the Game of Thrones finale this weekend, but it made it a whole lot more fun to watch. So because most of you probably haven't seen the movie yet, I'm going to start with my non-spoilery review, then I'm going to do my top five moments and talk about the sequels because they're going to do four movies. That's right. Originally it was going to be a trilogy, now it's going to be four movies. So if you're finding me for the first time, I'm just doing a bunch of big summer movie reviews just because we're in the middle of summer movie season. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Next up is 22 Jump Street and Transformers. It's like a whole summer of sequels, and normally that's not good news. A lot of sequels in the past have just turned up the explosions to 11 at the expense of the characters. But one of my favorite things about How to Train Your Dragon was how it changed the characters. Especially Toothless, Hiccup's Night Fury. Going into the movie, I actually knew they'd be doing two more, so I kept wondering how they were going to set those up, but I'll talk about that during spoilers. Like I said, Kid Harrington joined the cast, Kate Blanchett, and Jimon Hansu. Of all the newcomers, Kate Blanchett was obviously the best, but that's not really fair. Kid Harrington does a lot better whenever you can see him, and Jimon Hansu's character, the villain, isn't quite up to Turbo Wreck-It Ralph standards. So in case you didn't know, these movies are based on a series of books by Cressida Cowell, but the movies are written by Dean DeBlois. So whenever they liked the first movie so much, it did so well, they asked him to write more. And he said, I'm only going to do it if I can do a trilogy like my favorite trilogy, Star Wars. So if this feels like Empire Strikes Back, that's why. Because he specifically mentioned Empire Strikes Back when he was talking about the Star Wars original trilogy. I actually didn't know that when I went to see it, but now looking back on it, I do kind of think of them being up in the north as looking like Hoth and all the missing limbs being like Luke getting his hand cut off. It kind of makes me wonder if the third film will feel like Return of the Jedi, which I totally don't mind. So The Empire Strikes Back, How to Train Your Dragon, really takes that idea of trying to learn more about your enemies and just turns that way up. Obviously, Jimon Hansu's character being the villain in this case. The story definitely went to a much darker place than the first film. I would have liked to learn a lot more about Jimon Hansu's character, Drago Bloodfest. The movie is only about an hour and 40 minutes long, so it almost feels short enough to be a TV movie. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but DreamWorks actually does a TV show called Dragon Riders of Burke. It's a TV show based on the first movie. It only stars a couple people from the movies, so most of the main cast aren't in it. The other really big improvement that I thought was awesome was the animation in this movie. Just because technology evolved so fast, it was a lot like them demoing games like Dragon Age and E3 with graphics setups that were just disgusting, so your face just melts off, it looks so beautiful. It gave them the ability to make Toothless the Dragon move in some really new, fun ways. The dragons are one of the biggest actors in the movie, and their performances are completely dependent upon the animation, so I thought they did a really awesome job. So definitely go see this movie, but after you do, make sure you watch the Game of Thrones finale this weekend just for some meta Kit Harington moments. So time to get in spoilers. I'm going to talk about my top five moments and then I'll talk about where some of the sequels are going. So careful if you haven't seen the movie yet, but here we go. Number five, Hiccup is building a map. This is going to be the device that takes them through those future sequels. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean 3 whenever they yanked out the map at the end. Hiccup is going to continue to chart the known world. They even said it in the movie, with dragons around, the world just got a whole lot bigger. Technically, it should have been that dragons allow them to travel farther, so the world is getting smaller, but you get the idea. Their world in the first movie was just that little island of Burke. So now they're just going to continue to travel further and further and meet new characters in these new sequels. Number four, the Alpha Sanctuary. Definitely the coolest new location in the movie. I know I said the writer was inspired by the Star Wars trilogy, but I also saw a lot of Star Trek Wrath of Khan whenever they entered that cave. He meets his mother, they travel to Ice Planet Hoth, but she takes him inside her secret garden cave like Carol Marcus in Wrath of Khan. I totally love it when cartoons and animation pay homage to my favorite science fiction stories, especially when they don't feel corny, and I felt like they did a really good job of doing that in this movie. Especially that big reveal moment whenever Hiccup sees all the dragons for the first time and they're just flying in formation around that giant ice pillar. Meeting the Alpha was pretty cool too. He was definitely a big upgrade from the Mega Dragon in that first movie. Number three, Hiccup starts to learn more dragon lore. There were a ton of new things the movie taught us about dragons and controlling dragons. It seems like as we go forward, his mother, Kate Blanchett, is going to be teaching him a lot of these things. I did get a really big Game of Thrones flash from season three with that control rod that Daenerys got that controlled her unsullied army. Hiccup's mom and Drago Bloodfist both had those, you know, dragon control staff, so presumably Hiccup's going to learn to use something like that in the next movie. There were a few big questions I had after they started using those staffs. For instance, if Drago was doing the same thing as Hiccup's mom, why couldn't she command the evil Alpha like Drago? Part of the story was about bonding with dragons on a really deep level, as opposed to just ordering them around like mindless zombies. 
but they really didn't make it clear what the bond between Drago and his alpha was and why no one else was able to break that. Number two, Hiccup's mom and dad are reunited. I should have seen that this was writing on the wall for Gerard Butler's character dying. At least he got to dance with her one last time. Even though you'd expect Hiccup's relationship with Toothless or with Astra to be the emotional core of the film, I really felt like this scene was the real cryworthy moment. How dare you make me cry, Gerard Butler and Kate Blanchett. They were both really good singers. I didn't think that they needed to add Craig Ferguson's character in that scene. I didn't think they needed the jokes to break the tension. It was just a really nice moment. They didn't really do much of a romance subplot, but I will be interested to see if Hiccup gets a moment like that with Astrid in the next movie. And my number one moment, Toothless saves Hiccup from the evil alpha. I always thought the dragons behaved more like dogs more than any other animal, so it totally made sense that they incorporated pack mentality. Like you have an alpha that has a level of social control over the weaker dragons, but another dragon or dog can come along and challenge for control. Enter Toothless. I really like the way they paid off the dragon lore storyline by giving Toothless all those new abilities. Remember, they told us he's about the same age as Hiccup, so of course he's going to be developing new abilities as he matures. I'll say the one big bummer of the movie was is that we did not see any other Night Furies. But now it's your turn. Let me know in the comments below. What was your favorite moment and where do you think they're going to go in the sequels? Just going on the Star Wars metaphor, they're obviously going to have to go to a big forest or a jungle. I think what we'll see is a new colony of Night Furies. It's like during Kung Fu Panda 3, whenever they found all those other pandas, which is kind of funny because that was DreamWorks' last big animated franchise, so of course they'd do the plot again if it worked the first time. It's just that in this case, Toothless thinks that he's the only panda left, or dragon, however you want to think about it. The things that really stood out to me as teasers for the sequels were Hiccup's mom teaching him new things about dragons, Hiccup charting the map, and Toothless being that last Night Fury. So don't be surprised if they use all those things as story beats for that next movie, but obviously they have two more, so they're going to have to leave some places to go. Like I said though, Game of Thrones finale this weekend, make sure you check it out. It's going to be awesome anyway, but Kit Harington's in it, so it's going to be a nice funny meta moment for everyone that saw this movie. My next movie review is either going to be 22 Jump Street or at least Transformers, which is coming next week. So be sure to subscribe to get everything, and feel free to leave me suggestions for other big movies that you want me to do. Right now, click here for my Fault in Our Stars review, and click here for my Maleficent review. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.